where you live, what, how big your church was, how successful your ministry, it's really not going to mean anything. People in hell are not going to be commenting on the lobby of your church and the great coffee shop that you have. People in hell are not going to say, oh, I remember that moment when I went to the first church. And the lobby was beautiful. And one of the problems is that we've left this up to one or two or three preachers. And the devil knows that, so he isolates them and takes them out, and then the work of God is set back. But what about you? What will you tell him on that day when you stand before him? What will you tell him? What will you say to him? What will, what will your answer be? What have you done with Jesus? What did you do with Jesus? Well, Lord, I would have done more but the preacher. No, no, no. no. What did you do with Jesus? Well, Lord, I, I would have really obeyed, but... No, no, what did you do with Jesus? Well, Lord, I really was going to go, but uh, I, we, we couldn't get out of debt. No, what did you do with Jesus? Well, Lord, we were doing fine, then we got the house. No, no, what did you do with Jesus? Somebody said, that's not my responsibility. Yes, it is. There are many that will stand on that day and will cry their eyes out because when they get to the other side, they realize they have nothing to show for their life on the earth. Nothing. They were selfish. They lived for themselves. All they did was think about themselves. And the Lord was so kind to them and so gracious to them and so merciful to them and blessed them beyond measure. But they never told another person about it. They never shared anything with anyone. Many, how many in this place have been healed by the power of God? Wave your hand. You were sick at one time. You have an obligation to go tell the world that he heals. You have an obligation. How dare you? How dare you receive from his healing power and tell no one else about it? How dare you? What an insult to Calvary that you would even be a recipient of the healing grace and yet never tell another soul about it. Not only tell, but dispense it. Whether in the shopping center or the, the salon, the head salon or whatever, getting your nails done, just grab that hand and say, I'm going to stick it on your head right now. God's going to give you a miracle right now. Come here, let me pray for you. God's going to get you set free from that drug addiction that has you right now. Somebody said, I'm not in the full-time ministry. <laughs> What do you think the full-time ministry is? We've got an obligation. We have an obligation. That's why I tell our church, I tell them, I said, let me tell you this week, you lay hands on everything that moves. The last thing you ever want to do is tell your church they're not ready to do that. Because neither were you when you started the ministry. You weren't really ready either. But somebody gave you a break. It's not in their readiness. It's in the name. It's in the name. I'll never forget, I went back to Singapore a few years ago probably a little longer than a few now, maybe six, seven, eight years ago. God knows. Actually, it's longer. In 98, just before I went to Madison Square Garden, so it was a long time ago. 98 is a long time ago. How time flies when you're having fun. And I was in this church, and I began to talk about Asia, and I began to talk about the nations of Asia. And people begin to weep all over the building. And I begin to talk about India and Tibet and Mongolia and China, the nations of, of Asia, Indonesia. And then I said, if you feel the call of God to go to nations across Asia, would you come stand here? The people just got up and run down to the front. They were weeping. And the pastor jumped up. He said, can I say a few words? I said, sure, you're the pastor. He said, look, I know the people. He said, I know these all. He said, you guys are not ready. 
You're not ready. Well, there was no point in me doing anything then. It was the end of the service. I basically had wasted my time. See, in the back room, you ask the pastor, how long have you been preaching to these people? Well, 20 years. 20 years, and they're not ready. Wouldn't you or shouldn't you now resign the ministry? After 20 years of your ministry, they're not equipped. Wow. I've watched people come in 10 years ago that were, the fire of God hit them and they were gung-ho to go and, and they, oh, pastor, we're going to go. And I never discouraged them, nothing. I just gave them a couple of guidelines and they said they feel the Lord. They go out and they go on for a month, come back, get a job again, didn't work out. And about two years later, they called me, pastor, we feel the fire. And I never discouraged them, nothing. They didn't say, oh, I remember what happened last time and my God, you'll fail. You know, never, nothing, just... Keep preaching the word. Keep preaching the word. Pastor, feel the God. Bless you. And they go off and come out. Now this time they go two months, come back, get another job. You know, it didn't work out. And I've watched them do that. And now, after nine years, they come to me and say, we feel the fire. We've got to go. And I didn't say one word. I didn't say that, but this will be the fourth time. I never said a word. I said, I believe you're right. And they went. And now they're going. And it's breaking through. And, and, and they called me from parts of the world and said, I went to this place and God told me to tell the farmer this and then all heaven broke loose. And I said, I said, I know you're on it now. I said, because before you were calling me to find out what to do, now God's telling me what to do. And he said, thank you for being patient with me. Thank you for being patient with me, Pastor. Thank you for not telling me I couldn't do it, but you, you, you helped me and you encouraged me. And, you know, and, and they just begin to find their feet. They begin, but that was, this has been over a process of 10 years now. And now I look at them and, and tell them how proud I am of them and how excited I am for them. And they're going to obey God and do what God's called them to do. Because that's our job, to help people find their place. It's not going to take away from me. It'll never take away from me if the whole place empties and I have to go and fill it again. It'll never take away from me. I mean, Jesus had 12. Really, you'll find out you can only really work with 12. After that, it gets a little hectic. So if you've got more than 12... You get, you get to have some things, but don't try to overextend yourself. Just find 12 that you put the fire of God in them and turn them loose. And they'll find 12 and they'll find 12 and they'll find 12 and it'll multiply and spread as the kingdom of God does. Can you say amen? Come here, brother. Stand right here. Close your eyes. Lift your hands. Fire! Fire of God, that's a going right through you. Take that, it's yours. Hallelujah. Are you together? Come here, both of you. Glory to God. Glory to God. I'm just following the Holy Ghost tonight. Just following the Holy Ghost. Fire! That's it right now. That's the fire of God coming on you right now. Take that. Paripo sapa tande ita heka posa brbonde mindrosta. That's the fire of God on you right now. That's the fire of God on you right now. Pick him up. What do you do? Work for your dad. What do you do? Oh, we hang. Uh, it's like construction. You hang. You hang things. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's a call of God in your life. 
There's a call of God in your life. How old are you? Uh, 22. 22. There's a call of God in your life. You feel that right now? Huh? Yeah. What's that feel like? Huh? <laughs> my bones are on fire. <laughs> you what? My bones are on fire. Your bones are on fire, yeah. <laughs> fire! Fire the Holy Ghost. Are you, are you the dad? Mom, come here, both of you. Have you known the call of God's on his life? Huh? How long have you known that? Since he was 15. Since he was 15. What happened when he was 15? God called him. Fixing losing is a thing to work for the Lord. Oh, you fixing and losing me ain't going to work for you anymore. <laughs> I think I've, I've just lost him. You think you've just lost him? <laughs> you from Fort Worth? fire of God. The fire of God. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Jesus, 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 Jesus. Wonderful, 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 Lord. Wonderful, 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 Jesus. Wonderful, 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 Jesus. Wonderful, 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 Jesus. Some of you have written yourself off. You've said, oh, the Lord couldn't use me because of this and that. But God never uses you because of anything other than because he chooses to use you and because you choose to yield to him. If God was just running around looking for people, that we thought were eligible to be used, there wouldn't be one person. So you need to get over yourself. You need to get delivered from yourself. Don't argue with God. The potter has the decision concerning the clay, not the clay concerning the potter. All the clay must do is yield. All the clay must do is yield. When God called us into the ministry, I didn't know the Lord would give us a controversial ministry from the standpoint of the joy and the attack that's come just with joy. Who would have believed? Who would have believed that, the, that, that it would be so contrary because of joy? Of all things. But it did have but it has. But the Lord said to me, he said, if you'll allow me to do a work in the people, without trying to worry about what it looks like and what others think, 
then I will come and I'll have my way and I'll do my work. And it'll be accomplished. The work of heaven, the plan of heaven will be accomplished. Just like what happened to Saul of Tarsus on the road to Damascus, breathing out threatenings and a great light shone from heaven and he fell to the earth and he heard a voice. Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? Later on, we know that it was Jesus that appeared unto him in the way. Later on, when Ananias went to him and laid hands on him so he could receive his sight, he said, The Lord, even Jesus, that appeared unto thee in the way as thou camest. This young lady right here, come here. Now, we'll pray for everybody here tonight. Please don't just come up. Let me follow the Holy Ghost because otherwise you break me out of the... Pl I'm just going with the flow. That's the fire of God. It's the fire of the Holy Ghost. Fire! The fire of God. Never the same again. 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 What was interesting was when Ananias went to him at the command of the Lord Jesus. When God spoke to him, he said, go, rise, go in the street, call straight, and quiet the house. He said to him, he said, I'm going to show him how things, how many things he will suffer for my name's sake. Which <laughs> you think, well, that can't be New Testament. But he said, I'll show him how, th how many things he will suffer. I mean, there's a part of suffering of the church. I'm not talking about sickness or disease or poverty and lack. I'm not talking about that, but there's a suffering. The fellowship of Christ's suffering. It's only this American church that is, doesn't experience much of it, but our brothers and sisters in foreign countries right. that are dying for their faith on a daily basis are suffering for the cause of Christ. Some of them sit in rooms with no air conditioning and no windows and worship for hours with no music, have one Bible, and they tear the pages out and circulate around so that they can memorize the Scripture. And here, Americans have eight or nine or ten Bibles and different translations. Can't even memorize the Bible. Don't even show up at church. Don't even come with the Bible. Don't even read the Bible. No, they've got to have a quick scan Bible so they can read through more chapters in fewer time. Very little word content. Modern day Christian books that are nothing more than New York bestseller with a couple of motivational points with a few scriptures thrown in. And it's produced a weak, a weak mind people. Not even strong spirit, but we just weak minded, goofy people. They can't even stand when the storms come. And when the winds of adversity blow, and when persecution come, they take the line of least resistance. Because they don't have it in them. They have no substance in them. They have no root in themselves. They do it for a little time. And when persecution and affliction arises for the word's sake, they're offended. They, they grow resentful, indignant. They stumble and fall away. For their relationship is not with God, but with man. Their faith is through another, but not in Christ. Their faith is in their faith, but not in Christ. So all of this can only be wrought by the inward working, inward working of the Spirit of God.
And that's not up to God. Somebody said, well, if God wants to, he knows where I am. He can come. He can do whatever he wants to do. He can come. That's, that's fine. You can say that, but you have to seek him. If you hunger and thirst after righteousness, you will be filled. If you draw nigh to me, then I, he said, I will draw nigh to you. And then you cry out to him. You cry out on your bed. You cry out in the night hours. You cry out as you drive down the road. You cry out to him. And he will come. He will reveal himself to you. Or he'll reveal himself in you. And then he'll reveal himself through you. Little, little measure of Jesus to you. Little measure of Jesus in you. Little measure of Jesus through you. Big measure of Jesus in you. Big measure through you. Those that know their God will do exploits in his name. Those that know their God will do exploits in his name. Just go in this Sunday and turn things around in your service. Right during the worship, give the altar call. Mess everything up. Take the offering at the end. Throw the thing into a tailspin. Just flip the whole thing around. Shake them out. Move this side over that side because they all sit in the same pew. Just shake the whole thing up. Make them all. Just, just shake them all up. Just shake them all up. Get them out. When you pastors that are here, just tell them that you brought an evangelist and he looks like the pastor. And then do the work of an evangelist. How many pastors ever notice you go outside of your church and all heaven breaks loose? One. We're really doing it here for Fort Worth. How many notice you go outside your church all heaven breaks loose? Go to a foreign country. Three. Three. Four. I'll say it again. It takes a while. We're in Texas. I mean, no, you go to a foreign field, all heaven breaks loose. You come home and, 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 you know, huh? Oh, there's another hand. Okay, now it's getting through now. Turn up the hearing aids. Turn up the hearing aids. Okay. I want to tell you right now, the greatest move of God that we have in the last 15 years happens in our church. Not outside our church happens in our church. The greatest moves of God that we've ever had happens in the church. So I don't go out there where they've heard it before. I pretend they don't know me. I pretend they never know, even know who I am. And I say it again and say it again and just say it again and just preach it and just turn loose of the anointing. Somebody said, why? Why should I have to go hire somebody else to do my job? When after all, God called me to that city and called me to that region. So now I can't function, so I've got to get somebody from the outside to come and do my job for me because I'm like kind of, my hands are tired. Absolutely not. Adonik and I have ministered under the worst circumstances when in the natural, we did not even feel like ministering. I can remember walking into a camp meeting, eight days of meetings, and I said to Donnie, we've got many visiting preachers, let's turn them loose. You and I sit in the front row, and then I looked at her and said, absolutely not. I said, you're going first, I'm going second. We're going to smack this thing up the side of the head, and we're going to take the baton, and we're going to run. We smacked it up the side of the head. The power of God smacked that place Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, by Wednesday, we, we were in the heavenly realms. And no one would have known that we were in one of the worst battles of our lives. But we smacked it loose. In the middle of the worst, we smacked it loose. Because if all the enemy has to do is put circumstances around you, 
He'll neutralize you every single time. You will have weekly circumstances that will come. But the anointing for your region, the anointing for your city, your town, your village, where you is in you. The power of God is in you. You stir it up. Stir up the Holy Ghost on the inside of you. You stir it up. You turn it loose. You remind yourself of the call of God to your town, your city, your village, your region. You remind yourself of why He called you there. And you stir up yourself. Gird up your loins. Stand up like a man. And go out there and do the works of God. Go out there and preach the gospel. Go out there and cast out devils and lay hands on the sick. And turn it loose. Oh, hallelujah. I believe I'm speaking to some pastors here tonight. Turn it loose. It's like the difference if you have a watering hose where you just turn a little bit and let it just leak out or you just turn the thing on full. Just go in, turn the whole thing on full. Let the anointing on the inside of you just be released. I tell you, I feel something is going to happen in churches on Sunday. Something's going to happen in churches. How many pastors and leaders are here right now? Wave your hand at me. Wave your hand at me. Something's going to happen this Sunday in churches. I tell you, I feel it right now. I speak by the Holy Ghost. Some of you, my God, stir it up on the inside of you and turn it loose. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Pretend. I mean, if you get the results in the foreign field, pretend you're in a foreign field. Change up your platform. Change the carpet. Change everything. Change the whole thing. Or move the piano to that side. Change the whole thing around so it looks different. Put on some different clothes. Shave your hair or do something. Make yourself... Your, I mean, put yourself... <laughs> Seriously, I'm telling you, you can't get into the tradition that the people are getting into because they come in and sit like a blob on a pew and you walk out and preach like a blob in the pulpit. My God, stir yourself up. Grab a hold of the things of heaven. Pastor Harold, am I telling the truth? the truth? Is this the truth, Pastor? Oh, hallelujah. 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 Stir it up, my God. I do it often in our church. I said, now next Sunday, Evangelist Rodney is going to be with you. Pastor's taking his time off. And the next week, I just come out there and smack the place. Their visitors that actually think that I'm gone. The pastor's gone and his evangelist there. Seriously. You know, they don't know. And I talk, <laughs> I talk about Pastor Rodney and Evangelist Rodney, so they think it's two different people. <laughs> then the next time they come back, Say, well, pastor's back today. How many, you know, glad I'm back here, buddy, cheers. Say, was he rough on you last Sunday? <laughs> we, we had one Sunday, you know, we, we had a, like a big biking thing and I wore a biker outfit, rode to Harley in the, you know, years ago. And that night I was back in a suit and a, Gentleman came and said, Oh, Pastor Ronnie, I'm so glad to see you. I was here this morning. There was some biker dude here preached. Uh, it was me. He didn't know. I said, Did he do okay? He said, Yeah, he did, but I'm so glad you're back. <laughs> I never told him. I never said, Brother, that was me. I never said a word. I said, Well, I am. I'm back. The biker dude is gone. They didn't know. They didn't know. Thought it was two different people. They had no clue it was me. And we have a whole pastoral team. I often, people come up to me and call me one of our other pastor's names. Pastor David, thank you. <laughs> and I go, can I help you? Can you tell Pastor I'll tell him. 
I don't have the heart to tell them they've got the wrong guy. You know, bless their heart. They didn't know it was me. So I'll, I'll be sure to tell them, sister, God bless you. I'll tell Pastor Ronnie, don't worry. It's Florida. People can't see further than four rows of chairs. They don't know who's, who's that up there. By the way, I better tell you this. I got a call from my mom just before the service. And I said I was here with you. She said, please tell Pastor Bob and Joy that, that we love them so much. And she said, I always had fond memories of coming to Calvary Cathedral, you know, when they used to come. She's 84, you know. And uh, just thought I'd tell you that. Hallelujah. Mom still comes to see me before every service. Comes up to the office and comes sits and looks at me. It doesn't matter who's in the room. Politicians, generals, nothing. She walks right in there. I've come to check on my boy. <laughs> she, she don't care who's there. Yeah. Mom, this is uh, General so-and-so. Oh, good. Mom, this is the mayor. Mom, this man's a senator. This one's, he's, he's a congressman. Oh, fine. I, I came to see you. <laughs> Hallelujah. I feel the Lord challenging people here tonight to stir it up. I mean, dress your choir in African outfits so that they, they think you're in the bush or something. Put a thatched roof over the pulpit. Seriously. Have an African Congo drums beat when you walk out. And bring a couple of cows in on the side. And make it feel like you're in a village somewhere. You know what I mean? I mean, shake it up, you know. I mean, if you have great meetings in Australia, get a few kangaroos. Let them jump around the congregation. Have somebody play the didgeridoo in the background. Get, get a, a couple of people that look aboriginal and let them run around. Hallelujah. 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 There's some of you that used to flow in the gifts of the Spirit. You, 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 you quit. You don't even do that anymore. Stir it up. There's some of you used to preach. You don't even do that anymore. You, you become dignified. You, you, you're now a teacher. Preach. So early, we're bleeding profusely from several arteries right now. My God, somebody plug the hole. Tell the people the bus for the institution doesn't leave till another 30 minutes. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Put your hand on your belly right now. The 
It's time to stir it up. Foot. Yeah. Easier to move the foot.
Jeez. If you have a choice of moving the body or the foot, just move the foot. Working hard, I see. Working hard. Working hard. You keep drilling until you get it. Keep keep drilling until you get it. Sound like a sound like a pneumatic drill going on here. You get get through some some bedrock. To get through some water. The Bible said, "With joy, so you draw forth water out of the wells of salvation."
When I was standing up there, I looked back, I thought, my God, Jane Crouch is in the building. <laughs> And then I said, no, well, the hair's not pink, so it can't be. It was a reflection from the sweater. <laughs> You'll never know who shows up at the meetings. Quickly, bring it in, bring it back. Now, let me just say this with you. I was going to go a total different way tonight. But all you can do is follow the Holy Ghost.
is the combination of the hair and the pink sweater. Seriously. <laughs> Had it been a blue sweater, it would have been different. <laughs> Woo! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me just say this before we pray. I, I think <laughs> the most amazing thing to me is that some people have just sat here the whole service just dead pan. No, nothing. A response, not even a, just the eye, eyebrows, maybe blink every now and then, but just. <laughs> Dear sister from England, she flies over the pew. <laughs> and they're just sitting there dead pan. I guess that's what astounded me over the years in the move of God. Yeah. In the middle, when God's touching people, people get up and, and go. I, I, I don't even understand that. Partly because when we were kids and we went to church, we were there before it started. We were there when it finished. We were the last ones to leave. We didn't want to miss anything. There's no doubt in my mind that of the 120 that were in the upper room, probably more showed up before. But there could have been a dozen in the toilet. <laughs> At 9 o'clock when the power hit, they were sitting on the pot. They just picked the wrong moment to leave the place. <laughs> if you left the upper room at five to nine and you walked in at five after nine, it looked different. Something happened, Ethel. I see ours is not the only place that have reserved seats for people that don't show up. <laughs> I, I thought ours was the only place that we've reserved two rows for people that never show up.
Are you okay, brother? Are you doing all right? I guess that's means here. I want everybody to bow your heads just for a few moments, if you would, please. When it comes to God, it's really all about surrender. From the time you first come to Him to the time you see Him face to face, it's all about surrender. And surrender is when you give up. Surrender when you first come to Him is when you stop going your path and you go His path. You stop going your way and you go His way. You make the decision. And then he comes in and makes the difference. He says, come unto me all you that labor and heavy laden, and I'm going to give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, learn of me. My yoke is easy, my burden is light. And he calls to all. And hunger and thirst come. He's the living water. He's the bread of life. He's everything that you need. He's the only one that can satisfy. And He loves you. He loves you. And you make that surrender to Him tonight. And there's people in different places of surrender. There's might be people here tonight for the very first time you've never given your life to Christ but he calls you tonight will you surrender your life to him will you say Jesus come and be my Lord and Savior 2,000 years ago he went to Calvary's cross and paid the price and shed his blood and died for you so that you can come today not by earning it but by believing you can come in faith and receive that free gift of salvation where his blood will wash you clean and the power of sin will be broken. Every yoke, every bondage will be broken. The power of sin will be destroyed off of your life. And tonight, you make him Lord of your life. You give him full reign of your life. You put your life in his hands. You give him all of you and you take all of him. And you come as is. When we repent, it's not because we're sorry we got caught. When we repent, it's because we've received the grace to repent and we realize that we are sinners and we are in sin and we are away from God and we've lost and we need Jesus and we turn from our sin and we leave it behind us. And we turn to Him and we follow Him. And we come to him. Somebody said, let me get myself better before I come. No, 
You can't get yourself better before you come. You come as you are and you surrender to him as you are. And it takes humility to say, Lord, I'm coming to you right now. Humility is the ability to receive what you don't deserve. You come to him and say, I come. Thank you for dying for me on Calvary. Tonight, you'll be saved. I can guarantee you that. He loves you. What would happen if tonight was your last night on the earth? If you breathed out your last breath? If you put your head on your pillow and, and never woke up in the morning, morning time, they found your body just cold. Where would you go? Where would you be? Tonight is your night. Surrender to him. Secondly, maybe you've come in this place and once upon a time you gave your life to the Lord, but you've grown cold. You're not serving God like you should. You've allowed the things of the world to come in. You've lost your first love. You've lost your joy. You've lost the peace that you once had. The Bible speaks of three temperatures, hot, lukewarm, or cold. And there was a time when you were radically on fire for God, but now you're lukewarm. That's not a good position to be in because he said, if you're lukewarm, I spew thee out of my mouth. Modern day church in America is lukewarm. If you read it, Laodicean church. Revelation chapter 3, verse 14, he said, You say that I'm rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing. He said, Don't you know that you're wretched, you're poor, you're blind, you're miserable? I counsel thee to buy me gold tried in the fire. He's talking to the church, Laodicean. He said, Don't be lukewarm. Either be hot or cold, but don't be lukewarm. Lukewarm will get you into trouble. Sometimes it's the hidden things in the church. People don't tell others about. They never discuss it with anybody, not even the wife or the husband or the pastor or the parents or the children know about it. Hidden things, starting with pride, unforgiveness, bitterness, jealousy, anger, lust, hidden things that no one deals with. Those are the things that clog your spiritual arteries and that take you out. It's like a spiritual cholesterol. It will stop the blood from flowing in your life. Sometimes it's not hidden. Sometimes it's outward. It's something that the enemy set a trap for you and you fell into it. Now it's public. People know about it and they even use it against you. And you use it against you. And you can't get by the guilt of what happened three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years ago. It's a constant reminder to you. But you have to surrender that to him. Maybe it's not something hidden. Maybe it's not something outward. Maybe it's a storm that came against your life, a sudden divorce, a bankruptcy, the loss of a job, a sudden illness, a betrayal of a close friend, a depression. Something happened, just rocked your world. He said, well, Rodney, I was doing fine in 1998, something happened. I was doing, I was doing fine in 2008. Something just hit me like a, like a Mack truck from hell. And just, I just never been able to, I can't, I can't find my feet again. I just can't get back. I, I don't know what's wrong. I just, I just am not in the place that it should be. I just go through the motions. And he calls you, says, come, come back, come back. And then lastly, if you're in this place and you're not sure, you love the Lord, but you're not sure of your salvation, but tonight you want to make sure that Jesus is your Lord and Savior. If you fit into any one of these three categories, I want to pray with you and for you right now. Quickly, just put up your hand and say, pray for me. I need Jesus tonight. Thank you. God bless 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 you. Raise up high. God bless you. Slip it up high. God bless you. God bless you. Quickly, quickly at the back. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. Just slip it up high. Young people, just slip it up high. Another hand over there. Another hand. Another hand. Slip it up high right now. I was five years old when I first raised my hand and walked that aisle. Thank you. Anybody else? Anyone else? Just slip right at the back. Yes. Anybody else? 
Just slip that hand up high and say, yes, that's me. Another hand over here on the far side. While heads are bowed and eyes are closed. This could be your last opportunity. You might never have another opportunity like this. One more time, just slip your hand up. If this is you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I want you to look at me right now. In this section, you didn't raise your hand, but you want to be included. Slip the hand up right now and say, include me. Thank you. Anybody else? You didn't raise your hand, but want to be included. Put your hand up. Anyone else? This section didn't raise your hand, but want to be included. Slip the hand up right now. This section, you didn't raise your hand, but you want to be included. Quickly, raise your hand up high. Say, include me. Thank you. Anybody else? Thank you. I want everyone that raised your hand, please, all across the building, to stand your feet right now, quickly. Stand right now. All across the building. Don't wait for anybody else. Just stand quickly. Everyone that raised your hand. I want you to come. Come from where you are. There's many more. There's many more. Us just help me. Get them out. You saw them raise their hand. Come on. Come down. Quickly. Other hands on that side. Come on down. Come on. Come on. Come. Can an usher go help and just come? A baby. Can an usher go help and watch the baby there while this family comes? A few others, raise your hand. You haven't moved yet. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come down, come quickly. Don't ever underestimate the work of God in the altar. Now, with this, for me, my 33rd year of ministry, I bump into people all over. Say, 25 years ago, I was in a place that gave a call. Some of them insignificant meetings. So I came down and gave my life to Christ. Never backslid, been on fire, never went back to the world, nothing. Always served God. And you just stand there and you, you remember the meeting. 
was an insignificant one in the natural. I found my diary the first five years and I was looking, I think, this, the third year of ministry, I was ministering in the Transkai. My mother's daycare center, about 12 people showed up. I give an altar call, two people come, a man and a wife. Two out of 12 get saved. And the Lord said to me, do you remember that couple? I said, yes. He said, what happened to them? I said, oh. They went to England and pioneered a church in England. And they're in the full-time ministry. The next month, I found a meeting where I preached one person got saved. And the Lord said, do you remember that person? I said, yes, I do. He said, right, what happened to him? I said, Lord, he went to England. He now has got one of the, one of the biggest churches in London, England right now. Pastor's there. And in a span of two months, the one only had two saved, and the other one only had one saved, but they both went to England from Africa, and all have, they have churches. And the Lord said, if you remember how you felt at those meetings, you felt, come on, is that all I can get, you know? <laughs> like, that's all I got, two. People say, how, how was the turnout? Well, we had 12. How many got saved? Two. But the two that got saved and, and well how was the meeting it was good. I preached my heart out how many got saved one one guy come down one lonely guy come down a Brit from Britain a lonely Brit come down I thought is that all I can do here today that's it that's my chop I get in the car and drive away great this is phenomenal we're going to get the world saved now I got to preach my heart out. Got one. But he goes to England and pioneers a church. Who would believe? Who would believe? Is that the church you go to? Is that right? That's right. Can you believe that he come down and got saved? Well, they what? They go to the church. They go to the church. That, that's their pastor. You know, later on when I went, please give him my love. Later on when I went to him and he said, he said, you know, I came down that night and gave my life to the Lord. I said, I do. I do remember that. But in the natural, I thought I'd failed. Totally flopped. Don't ever take it lightly. Don't ever treat an altar call lady because you don't know who's standing here. You don't know of this group who's standing here, what they're going to do. You have no clue. Please tell him I say, huh? Give me his number so I can, I think I lost his number. I need to get hold of him anyway. Wow. Amazing. See, some of the stories I tell you are true. <laughs> it really did happen, you know. I mean, it wasn't a parable. <laughs> It wasn't, there was a certain man preaching. And a certain man responded. That this actually happened. All right. Reach your hand out towards these precious people. Yeah, I want you to look at me. We're going to pray. A prayer. One prayer fits all. If you mean busy with God, God means busy with you. Just close your eyes right now and raise your right hand to heaven and pray this after me. Say, Father, I come to you. In the precious name of your son, Jesus. Lord, you said in your word, if I confess with my mouth, Jesus is my Lord and my Savior. And I believe in my heart that God has raised him from the dead. I will be saved. So, Father, right now, I confess Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. He is my Lord and my Savior. Come into my heart right now. Take out the stony heart, put in a heart of flesh. Wash me, cleanse me, change me, fill me, use me. Let me never be the same again. 
I turn my back on the world. I turn my back on sin. And I follow you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for dying for me. Thank you for shedding your blood for me. Thank you that on the third day you rose for me. And thank you that you're coming back again for me. From this night on, I'll never be the same again. I confess Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. He is my Lord and my Savior. And right now, by faith in the finished work of the cross and by the shed blood of Jesus, I receive the free gift of salvation. I'm born again. I'm saved. Thank you, Lord, for saving me now. In Jesus' name. Now, Father, seal them now by your blood and by your spirit that on that day not one would be missing. Raise them up to be mighty men and women of God and use them to impact this generation, we pray. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Look at me, lady. What do you need? What do you need? Talk to me. What do you need? Jesus. I break the pull of the world. I break the pull of the world like a magnet. I break it. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, break it. That's a fire of God on this young man. Fire! Fire of God. Fire of the Holy Ghost. Fire of God. Hallelujah. The fire of God. Never the same again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, if you all turn around and look at me, if you follow this brother right there, waving his hand for a few moments, we have a gift for you. Go through this way. You know, this Easter Sunday morning, we had 422 adults saved in the main sanctuary. I think we crammed in just under 1,800 people Sunday morning, Easter Sunday. 422 adults. I tell you, you just got to go after it. Don't worry about the religious people. They don't want to stick. Don't worry about them. Get the newbies in. Get the total heathen in. Bring them in. Bring in. Stop worrying about the Jezebel and the Jingle Bell. And just get the sinners in. Get them saved and set free and delivered. Get them on fire for God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I tell you, I get drunk and then I don't even, you know, I just enjoy myself. I'm, I'm actually having fun here tonight. I, I, just, I just get lost in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. How you doing, Brother Richard? <laughs> he just flew in from Russia. He's so jet lagged, he doesn't even know where the jet is. <laughs> I'm on a bigger time change than you. How? Well, I guess I'm up here activated in the anointing. That's not fair. Bless your heart. Huh? Yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. Pick this young man up. Look at me. What's your name? 
How old are you? 12 years old. What do you feel on you right now? I want all of the 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 year olds to come stand here in one line right across the front if you would. put in 17, 18, and 19 on as well. your hands. The fire of God. Now in Jesus' name. The fire of the Holy Ghost. Now in Jesus' name. Right through you. That's it going right through you. Right now. Right now. Fire. Woo. Kaparo dene barupa pandiri bovunde este prepa. Fire. The fire of God right now. The fire of the Holy Ghost. Yep, that's it. The fire of God right now. The fire of God going right through you from the top of your head to the soles of your feet right now. Fire. The fire of God. The fire of the Holy Ghost. Fire. The fire of God right now. Lift your hands. Fire. Fire of God. Smart Alec, huh? Hmm? Not? All right. Well, just close your eyes then. Have you never been in a meeting like this? I have. Yes. You have. Do you know what's going on here? Mm hmm. Well, it's not for you then? It's not for you then? Well, you're not in a position to receive. Uh-huh. You've got to receive with your heart. You've got to let the Lord come and touch you. You can't stand with your eyes open with the smoky grin on your face. I'm not yet to prove anything to you. It's about you grabbing a hold of God and letting the Lord do a work in you. So that you can fulfill the plan and purpose of God that he has for your life on the earth. For without it, you can't fulfill it. Without his touch, you can't do it. And you'll go your own way. And your own way will lead to destruction. But when his touch comes, it will seal you and set you apart. And you follow his purpose and his plan. Oh yeah. And you'll be blessed fire of God.
Jesus. Jesus. That's it right now. Jesus. 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 That's it. Fire. Fire. That's it. Fire. Yeah, that's it. Fire. The fire of God. Right now. That's it going right through you. Fire. Fire. Jesus. Yeah. Jesus. Now. That's it right now. Fire. That's it right now. Fire. That's it right now. Just receive that right now. Take that right now. Just receive that right now. Take that right now. Let that go right through you. Now. He said out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. Fill them up to overflowing. Let's, let, that, let that flow like a river out your belly. Come on. Let that flow like a river out your belly. You too. Yes. Out of your belly. Out of your belly. <laughs> That's it. Out of your belly will flow rivers. Come on. That's right. That's right. That's right. All those that want prayer, if you stand, please. I want to line people up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. 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 And there you are. I wondered where you were. I was looking around. I thought he's going to pop up any moment now. Brother Charlie, are you going to help me line up at the body? Please, brother, get the mic. I was looking for him. I thought, where, where be him? I knew the rapture had to take place. All of our, re all of our registered ministers... In this section, if you'd come line up here, please. All the registered ministers here in this section can line up here. Registered ministers here in the middle section, right, right over here, please. Registered ministers here, if you would line up. The quickening by the Holy Ghost. Yes. Yes. For if the same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead, one in you, to quicken Ooh. your mortal bodies, Father, quicken it. Jesus. Uh, Thank you, Father. A strengthening. Thank you. Thank you, 
a strengthening even now, the light. Yeah, that's it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. The strengthening. Thank you, Lord. Renew your youth like an eagle. Father, thank you, Lord. Yes. Teach you. Fire. The fire of God. The fire. The fire of God. Oh, yeah. The fire of the Holy Ghost. Fire of the Holy Ghost. Pardene, the Ripa, Palabanda, the Braboko, Pondari Vista. Karamba, Romangele, Bruto, Rabandini, Mosas. Fire! So, Prombo, da Bandini, Vis, to Prebendo. That's it. Right now, right now. Take that. Let that go right through you. The fire of the Holy Ghost. Yes, the fire of God. Fire of God. Yes, thank you, Lord. Australia, shaken by the hand of God. Another wave right across that land, Lord. Paparo de Bobondo, Bofondi, Babandi, Telebrosto, Prabandi, Boko, Babande, Lebasto. Now! So probondeli bi 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 a tala baro nenga leva rupa nomba repa tela brandi i le brepa sombra bende lembo rupo kapada banga leva ruta nombre era bera bende lepo sombra yenda nanga langa hell sa paro din chombrom banden dun dali mandre beba supra baya mora nenda lebra biesta membra bondre eto lombrando supra bola bande endo le brasti probon se riasto Lebro, so why not? Why not? So bravo, Tomo. Mero Moshaya. Mindra baka lebro, so. Mendro bosa labra. Ita lebro, so brabon raba. Andi do die. Nandre di ba. Oh, pasiklo taya. Membro bondo labra. Bonde sapaya. Sebro bonda. Leaves ebre. Bonde lebro bon. Amandra. Uh, parabo rebetea. Nambro vo sopra, sombre bi a te a babanda. Se probonda baba baba babandro do so probonde bi dibo. Fire of God, the fire of God, the fire of God. Now, change his name upon your life. We thank you for it. 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 That's it. Now. Fire, 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 fire on the mountains, fire on the mountains. Mandro Zombra, fire. Brundili Bosapa, Mondro Zombra, Mandro Bosapa, Mondola, Mandili Bosopro, Rendo Bosa, I delle Brosso Probonde, Ella Brondo, Pane, Mondrosa, Mindre, La Bro, La Bro. Lebron de Liva, Lebron de Landi, Lebron de Lebro, Librando Losso Redia. Thank you, Lord. Now, Probonda Siaba. Yes, so Probondi. In a man, Probo. Fire. Fire. Now, fire. Increase. Increase and multiply. Increase and multiply. Basso probande di soprobondo, membro osso fire. Now, fire. Now, that's it. Now, in the name of Jesus, that that's it right now. Fire, fire of God. Fire. Oh, capala banda di basso probondo. The fire of God, right now. Now, the fire of God. Fire of God, fire. The fire of God. Fire of God. Yes. 
Now, Jesus' name. Fire! Giving glory to your name. I can live. Fire of God. Knowing that you. Fire of God. Must wiggle. Fire. Fire of God. Fire of God. The fire of God. Fire of God right now. Take it. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. Don't be in a hurry. Now. Fire. Take that. Fire. Now. Take that. Fire. Fire. Now. Fire. Fire of God. The fire of God right now going right through you from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. A miracle. Give miracles tonight even in this line. Miracles of healing. Yes. Fire. Woo. Papara bandele brobondo. Paramba tale bobondo. Marama dalaba kapa soporobo. Bandele brobondo. Do ba ba de do do. That's it. Fire of God. Now. The fire of God. Now. Jesus name. Fire. Let your fire fall. Now. Jesus name. Now. Jesus. That's it. Now, Jesus' name. Now, Jesus' name. Now, Jesus' name. Fire. Now, Jesus' name. Now, Jesus. Take that right now. Now, Jesus' name. Now, Jesus' name. Fire. Now. Fire. Increase. Now, Jesus, Kapara ah, dear. Now, fire of God right there. Now, Jesus, name. 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 Now, Jesus. Name. The Lord told me, said people in this line tonight are being healed of all kinds of diseases, some even incurable, some that we shouldn't even mention, some, and it has to do with STDs. I tell you, God's healing people. I feel that so strongly right now. God's healing people from blood diseases, blood, blood diseases, even HIV. I'm telling you right now, I feel it. Hepatitis C. God's healing blood diseases now and also sexually transmitted diseases, stuff that happened when you were not saved but you carry it with you. God's healing. I just feel it. I just feel it coming right through like a wave of the Spirit of God. I've never called that out publicly ever in the meeting but I felt it tonight so strong. I felt the Lord tell me, he said, tell the people I'm healing them of what they, the doctor says incurable. You're being healed of right now. You've been healed. You've come out of that life. What happened was from the world, but it's broken off of you. Tonight, God's healing you. If you promise to keep yourself pure, you'll be fine. Every trace will go from your body. Every trace shall be removed from your body. Anyone Hallelujah. Else? Now, I loose that anointing right now. 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 I loose that anointing. I loose that anointing. I loose that anointing. I loose that anointing. I loose that anointing right now. I loose that anointing right now. Take that. Anyone else that desires prayer, please come forward. Parobo da la baca la mandele beke le bundo lo bora mandele briesto la broto blood 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 being healed blood bora masi pro bundo la basa people are getting new hearts tonight brand new hearts unclogging of the arteries in Jesus name Father we thank you for the manifestation 
the glory of God in the bodies of individuals tonight in Jesus' name. That's it, right now, right now. That's it, that's it. Thank you, Lord. He touched me, oh. He touched me. And oh, the joy. The joy. That floods my soul. Something wonderful. That's it right now. Happen. Something wonderful happened. Fire of God right now. Fire of God. Fire. Take it right now, right now. Be healed. And Power. Take it. Take it. Barama bandam badai, barraja de do por dia. Lebrondo borrabacanda, lebristo prabonde, se prebondo tondora da. Piramondro bomondro babondre baba. A quickening in your body by the Holy Ghost. Now, now, Jesus. Take that. Now, now. Now, something wonderful fire. And now, I know now, in Jesus' he name, touched me. Right now, I'll miss that touch. I'll miss that touch. Great job, big guys. You all right, lady? Jesus. <laughs> fire. <laughs> fire. Fire. The fire of God. 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 Now. Fire. Something. Fire of God. Fire. Now. Now, now, fire, fire of God right now, the 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 fire of God, now, fire. Now, that floods my soul. Mm. <laughs> Something wonderful happened. Fire of God. And now I Fire of God. He touched me. Fire of God. Now, 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 now. now. Now, 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 and 
fire. Fire. Woo. Fire and wrong. Thank you. Now. Fire. What's happening? You've been in like a thousand of these meetings. But something's happening to him tonight. Been like a thousand meetings, but something's happening to him. Of all the nights you had to pick today. guy's a revival connoisseur. <laughs> Fire! Fire! Where people call our ministry because said they saw me on television and I didn't look well. They said I was very thin. They were praying for me. <laughs> Brother Rodney was okay that he didn't look well. And, I, and they had to tell him, no, that I'm fine. I just lost weight, that's all. And said so they called the office, said they're praying for me that I, I, I'm, I'm too thin. That I, something happened to him and he lost He's looking sick. I said, no, I'm totally fine. Have a drink. Have another drink. Have a, have a third drink. Have a fourth one. Hallelujah. Jesus. <laughs> Jesus.
let me remind you of one thing that is not people think to think people tend to think that the move of God is to do about the meeting now it's not it's what God's going to do in the days to come through the individual I mean the upper room was where it started but that's not where it ended and then it had an outworking and an overflow so it's what God's going to do through individuals here in the days and weeks and months to come. That's what's going to count. Not how you flew through the air or hung over the pew. It's what he's going to do through you in the days to come. Have you been blessed tonight? always great to come back and be with the Bob and Joy. We love you guys so much. Charlie, Priors, and all the others that look so familiar here. You know. Here's a little grayer, a little wider with the frost and many windows. still don't have a gray hair there brother <laughs> I think there's one I found one right there there's one right there on the left side that one little gray hair Glad to have Sister Jane with us tonight. Pastor Bob is, I believe, half bionic. That, that he's, there was a, a movie out television series called The Six Million Dollar Man, and I'm not sure what parts he had replaced, but I believe you have a bionic arm and a brain. And so he's the, he's the new Six Million Dollar Man. Amen. We love you. Love you. Thank you for coming. I haven't even left the building. He's already negotiating a return. <laughs> we, we're in discussions right now for yeah. the return. Right, right. Just don't want to fight the will of God, you know. <laughs> Hallelujah. I want to let Brother Rodney know how much we appreciate Rodney and Donica coming and being with us. Could we just... Amen. It's been so long. We've had several of you tell us that you feel like it's been the best revival now. And uh, it's God. It really is God. Every session. Every session, every session has just been so special. And all of you have made it that by your hungering and thirsting after righteousness. Uh, this church, I know the pastor of this church, he is hungering and thirsting after God. And uh, now, This next Sunday, who's preaching? I'm pastor? preaching. <laughs> so you're going to let the pastor rest for a while? I'm going to let the pastor rest. I'm coming out of shoot one Sunday morning. And I, I told.
told Tony to get get your daughter-in-law's song because oh, we got it. He's got the okay. DVD. I got first call on that. <laughs> Hallelujah! Sunday morning. <laughs> then I'll let our music people learn it, and we'll all go with it. Praise God. Boy, this is just you know, you know, folks. The the presence of God is priceless, and we so desperately need these times. Everyone's going full tilt, it seems like. I never thought I'd be this busy at this time in my life. You know, but, uh, thank God it's the anointing that makes the difference. Thank God for all of you that have just opened your heart. There's just nothing else to say except praise God. And thank you, Anna Donica. That's a good steak today, too. Yeah, I was just thinking about it. We yeah, introduced yeah. Richard. Where, where is he? Yeah, where is Richard? Yeah, I Richard. introduced No, the other Richard. Where does he go? I, there he is. I introduced him to lamb fries today for the first time. <laughs> lamb fries. It's, uh, it, it's, a, it's a cattleman's tradition. I take him down. I take a newbie and order them a plate and tell them it's good, and they eat it. And only afterwards I, ta- I tell them what it is. It's one of my fun things I get to do when I come yeah. to Texas. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Let her call them Rocky the Mountain Lord. oysters. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're something else. South Africans. We like Texans. I know what? you. Know. I mean, really. Texans like South Africans. You know, I've been to South Africa. Too. Yeah, I believe you have. I sure have. Preached over there. Enjoyed it. Never got up to Cape Town, but I met other times. Let's thank God. Just lift your hands. Let's praise God tonight. Just thank Him for what He's done, is doing. Father, we thank you for this precious, priceless time that you've given us in your presence. Lord, I thank you for some of the sweetest people on the face of God's earth in this room tonight. I thank you for the love of God that we feel. And Lord, We thank you that we have times like this to go back and do the things that you've called all of us to do. God, we just cry out. Lord, we're believing you for the greatest harvest that we've ever had. In all of our churches and ministries, thank you for your presence and your power that makes it all worthwhile in Jesus' name. Well, we thank you for... Thank you, Father, for safe home going, safe flights, safe drives, safe all the way home for everyone here in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. We'll announce the we'll announce the dates on next year. We really need your help getting the word out. I've really been puzzled sometimes just how we can get the word out about revival now because you see the quality that's here. Make up your mind to start talking to some folks right now about next year. We'll we'll get the dates to you in Jesus' name.